Good morning and welcome to this Holy Mass of the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene. In this Mass, we pray for all those who have asked our prayers. We pray for those who are grieving at this time. Pray and ask for God's comforting. Pray for the sick. Pray for the lonely. Pray for seniors who live alone. Pray also for children with physical or mental disabilities. Pray for those in jail. Pray and ask that God, who knows our needs and knows our pains and our hurts, may bring us his comfort and grace and strength. Pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. Pray that God may grant them many more opportunities to celebrate, where they can celebrate with others. I invite you to bring your intentions and let us pray together. Our opening hymn today will be City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, in you there is dawning, for all those who weep, the people in darkness have seen a great light, the Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord our light and our love has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins, and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King of God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, entrusted Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection. Grant, we pray, that through her intercessional example, we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see him reigning in your glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul, to the Corinthians. We're taking the first, second option. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impairs us. Once we come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A response to the psalmist, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. 
O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirst. Like the earth parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting, thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus have I gazed towards you in the sanctuary to see your power and glory. For your kindness is, a greater, is greater than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied. And with exultant lips, my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, my God. You are my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Tell us, Mary, what did you see on the way? Saw the glory of the risen Christ. I saw his empty tomb. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you, with your spirit, breathing from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they have placed him. Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one on the head and one on the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not see, did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was a gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him. I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have yet, I've not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I'm going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, if there is anything that is so true about human life, is the fact that everything we love Everything we treasure, everything we have, everything we are, and everything we could ever be, we will lose one day. And that's a very scary thought, that everything I have and am and will ever be, and every blessing God has given to me on this life, that there comes a day that I will lose all of that. I may not lose every, every one of that together at the same time. But sure, we lose a lot of those things every day. And so grief becomes a condition for human existence because for everything we lose, we grieve that loss. And for some, those losses are not endurable. They change their lives in more ways than they are able to handle. For some, their lives will take a downward, downward spiral. 
and spiral into non-existence, and for others, they're able to thrive, or at least survive. And that could be you today. That could be me. That could be anyone that you know about whose heart is still broken because they have lost something. Maybe they lost all of their investment. And they're grieving that loss. Or maybe they lost their relationships, or lost their marriages, or lost a child. Or, or lost a, someone else, a friend. It's even possible that someone just died. And so they've lost someone. Not just a person who died, but they lost all the other secondary effects of those losses. So it's hard. I don't know anyone for whom grief is just an easy ride. Unless what you lost didn't matter to you. If you lose something that mattered to you, naturally your reaction would be like Mary of Magdala. She had lost Jesus. This was the person who gave her, her life back. So he meant more than just a preacher in Nazareth. He had saved her from seven demons. And so she, if she was alive and had a life, it was thanks to Jesus. So Jesus meant so much to her. And now he was dead. So you could imagine that someone who gave you your existence suddenly passes away. She was grieving. And so you could place yourself in her place. Just put yourself in her shoes. Maybe that's where you are right now. And don't forget, when the Lord died, no one was there who knew him to be able to kiss him and say goodbye. No one was there to be able to say until we meet again. He didn't have, no one had that opportunity because everything was being handled by these Roman soldiers. And, and, I, and I think about all the people we're losing around this time because we are only able to travel. We are unable to be with those who die from this virus. Some of our grief, or part of our grief, will be like the grief of this woman. Wasn't there to say goodbye. Wasn't there to even bathe him, clean him up. You know, just do the normal things we will do for someone we love, so as to facilitate closure, to see our loved one buried. And it helped us to heal and to, uh, to gain some closure. That didn't happen for her. It didn't happen for that person. And it's not happening for a lot of people at this time. So we experience complicated grief where we're not sure exactly the source of our sadness, the source of our pain, the source of our hurt. It's not just that someone has died, but there are so many other things that trigger guilt, trigger anger, frustration, mention all the, all the harmful emotions out there. Maybe that's where you are right now. If you could just do one thing. I hope you do what Mary did here. Now, yes, she knew Jesus had died, but she was still looking for Jesus. The mistake, she was looking for Jesus among the dead. But between you and I, we know that he is not risen. So the one thing that you want to learn from Mary is at the moment of your grief, you want to look for Jesus. Because it's only him who makes meaning and gives meaning to all our grief and our pain and our hurt because he's able to shed greater light on those feelings. Now see what happens here. The moment Mary looks back, scripture says, he saw a man and she said to him, he said to him, or said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, So if you have carried him, that means if you have carried Jesus, please give him back to me. I will take him. So here is Mary looking for Jesus because that is the only one that is able to comfort her and to give her, give meaning to her life again. And Jesus said, Mary called her by the name Mary and everything changes from that moment her grief becomes joy 
she becomes the carrier of the good news that something just changed, something just happened. My prayers are that if you find yourself in this place of grief, that you don't stay there, that like Mary, you can rise and go towards Jesus and seek for Jesus because like Mary, he will call you by your name. And once he does that, he is going to give a new meaning to your experience. He did so to Mary, and I know he can do it again. And it doesn't matter the source of your grief. If you can seek Jesus, and if you can find Jesus, he will call you by your name, and he will change your experience. I pray, dear friends, that the encounter between Jesus and Mary may be your encounter between Jesus and the Lord as we celebrate this Eucharist. That just as Mary encountered Jesus at the tomb, that you will encounter him from this altar, that you will experience the power of that effect by this encounter. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, aware of your loving but mysterious plan for us, we come before you as your family of hope. We dare to allow you to act as you chose best, realizing that to hope in you, despite all twists and turns, is to be assured of your timely help. That all civil and religious leaders may provide hope for their communities by assuring them of their God's abiding care and providence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That parents may inspire their children to grow, to ground hope for their future in God's tender and loving care, despite all problems and anxieties. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all educators may inculcate an abiding sense of hope in their charges by acting in ways that communicate their God's ongoing care and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That husbands and wives may deepen their mutual commitment by providing a hope that God sustains their love even in the midst of problems and crises. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That priests and religious may provide contagious examples of hope for the depressed, the grieving, the discouraged, and the lonely by their care and assistance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick, especially for those who are in critical condition from this virus that the grace of God's healing may be granted in full measure to them. Pray for medical workers who provide medical care, that God may protect them, that God may bless their ministries. We pray for those who have anniversaries or birthdays to them, that God may bless this opportunity and give them many more to celebrate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother's intercession as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Gracious and loving God, you never cease to protect and guide us in all the problems of daily life, even if we fail to recognize your attentive presence. Please increase our hope that we may be assured that you will never abandon or leave us unprotected. Make us ever aware that we, are, we always remain members of your extended family. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Goodness said, I love God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the, the offerings presented in commemoration of St. Mary Magdalene, whose image of charity was graciously accepted by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your sins, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Your great example lends us courage. Your fervent prayer sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we are praying. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Raphael, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant, dear Lord, that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray with confidence in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of that peace. From me to you and your families, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray for the grace of spiritual communion. Most merciful Lord, just as you appeared today to Mary Magdalene and brought her comfort and grace, we ask that you show yourself and manifest yourself to all your sons and brothers who are still unable to participate of your sacrament. Just as that encounter was so life-changing for Mary, may it be true for all those who desire you at this time. May they receive the grace for spiritual grace and communion. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May the holy reception of your mysteries, Lord, instill in us that persevering love with which St. Mary Magdalene clung resolutely to Christ her Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to remind you once again that you remain the delight of God Almighty. And it doesn't matter what we lose on this earth. They were all God's gift to us. And I have no doubt that nothing we lose can leave us in despair until we choose not to seek the Lord, the giver of everything that we have. May God help us to seek him, especially at those moments. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Of the Ave, of the Maria, of the Ave Maria, the only Heavenly blessed, your glory proclaim. 
On earth we thy children invoke your sweet name. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. 